Here's my story. 16. Black and have a family down in Alabama. They farm and own a huge amount of land in Huntsville. Uncle owns a big house and a bunch of trailers they put out in the woods for hunting and camping. Down south, cousin suggests that we go there to camp. Now, I'm a city kid from Chicago, so they tease the fuck out of me. Collect food, kill a pig and some chickens, and bring necessities to camp out for a few days. We go to the camp, and it's obvious something is wrong. Air has this weird electric smell, like right before a storm, like ozone. And we think nothing of it, unpack, and go down to a little creek to swim for a few hours. All of a sudden, some older white guy and a white teenager come out of the bushes. He has a shotgun in the crook of his arm and says hello and asks us what we're doing this far back in the woods. So him about my uncle, who he knows, and say that we're camping out. He tells us we need to be real careful out here and stick together. There was a big animal in the woods. His son, who's my age, asks if he can stay and hang out with us. He says okay. So, we end up playing football. Dicking around with me, there's... Uh, the white kid, Tanner, five of my cousins, and then four of their friends. In total, there were five girls and six boys, so we're all around 15 or 17. Uh, we ended up just dicking the whole day away, so we head back to the camp and pull out some stuff for a campfire, even though the trailers both had kitchenettes. Well, Tanner says that his family property sits up against my uncle's. He wants to run home and ask his dad if he can come out camping with us, and my cousin Rooster says that he's going to go with him since it's going to get dark soon. One of the girls also wants to tag along. Well, it's uh, it's about 7 o'clock and it's starting to get pretty dark. They take flashlights and take the trail towards Tan's property. The rest of us chill. We make s'mores, drink, kiss on the girls. About 30 or 40 minutes later, there's the smell of ozone again. And you could smell it over the smell of the fire that we had started and this really nasty coppery like smell, like like right after you've had a nosebleed and it stopped. It wasn't exactly like dried blood, but it was that nasty metallic back of your throat smell. But we immediately think that it's some kind of electric malfunction, or someone uh, left, left a hot plate on or some shit. So we reach the trail, we reach the trailers and nothing's on. We can all smell it. All of a sudden, we hear people booking down the path towards us, and, and Rooster, Tan, and the girl all come running into the clearing out of breath, and they don't even break stride. They all run right into the trailer, right by where the fire is. We all got the fuck out of there and get into the trailers. Well, they end up calming down. Even Rooster is crying his fucking eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is guttering lower and lower, so my other cousins say fuck it, and are about to go inside to get the generator out of the shed between the trailers. Tanner goes, fuck no. Lock the front door. Ain't nobody else getting outside. He's been crying too, and his eyes are bloodshot and puffy, and his pants are as dirty as shit. He goes on to tell us that they went up to his house, and his father said, sure, he could go out camping, but to make sure that they were careful on the way back, and that maybe they should take one of the hunting rifles just in case. Evidently, Hunter had seen something in their yard a few days before. One of their pigs had come up ripped up and half-eaten, so they assumed that it was just some big cats or coyotes, even though they didn't usually fuck with, with live animals. Well, he'd gone upstairs, packed his stuff, and told his dad that they'd be okay without the rifle because coyotes avoid people. So, they started walking back towards where we were camping. So Rooster finally stopped crying and shaking, and the girl the girl already had, but she was just staring out the window with a dumb look on her face. Then he says that they had gotten halfway into the woods toward the camp when they started to hear shit in the forest. He was almost pitch black by this time, so there wasn't they weren't sure uh, at first what the fuck it was. The girl says that she heard something in the bushes right off the trail, and they all beamed their flashlights over there, and there was someone standing back in the woods in the, in the, in the little hollow. The rooster said that they shouted at him and told him that he was scaring the fuck out of them and what a dick he was. He says that's when he realized that the guy was facing away from them. So they keep walking. And they start smelling the, the nasty, coppering ozone smell. And they say that they look off into the forest on the opposite side and it's a dude standing in the forest, backwards slightly closer to the path. 
Now they start power walking, and Tan keeps going. I, I should have taken the fucking rifle. As they're telling their story, the smell is still super strong, even inside the cabin. They say that after they started walking faster, the kind of low gibbering had started coming from out of both sides of the woods. They started booking it back to the trailer. The girl said that she had flashed her flashlight out into the woods to the side of them, and they had seen something jerking itself through the woods, and the gibbering just got louder and louder. And when they could see the light from out of the campfire, something had come out of the woods about 40 yards behind them onto the track, and they had just flat out ran as hard as they could to the trailer. So, we're out of the fucking woods, and we're assuming at this point it's some rednecks or some shit trying to fuck with us. And all of a sudden, my other cousin, Junior, starts going on about how he went to school with a native kid that was telling him about the goat man or some shit. He promptly tell him to shut the fuck up, because we don't need any spooky talk right now. But he just keeps going on and on about how it's the fucking goat man, and how we're in his woods, and blah blah blah. Now, at this time, I had never heard of a goat man, or any of that, but a couple of years ago, the year before I graduated from college, I had a menum for a roommate, and I ended up asking him about it. And to sum it up, it's basically a fucking guy with the, he with the head of a goat and can shapeshift, and he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. It's also supposed to be kind of like the, the Wendigo, and it's bad mojo to even talk about it, and well, it's even worse when you see it. Keep in mind, I didn't know this back when I was 16. So my cousin is going, the goat man's going to get in and fucking get us. And the girls are all terrified. My cousins and I are all fucking trying to figure out if it's just some hillbillies or some animal. So all of a sudden, the smell goes away. Like, to this day, I haven't even experienced anything like it. Like, usually the smell fades away or gets less. It just literally was there one second and not the next. So an hour... So after an hour, making it around 9 or 10, we stopped shitting bricks enough to go back outside and stoke the fire again. We figure it was just some asshole trying to fuck with us. So we don't go back home, because we think if we go, if we do, they'll chase us through the woods or some crazy shit. Nothing else weird happens that night. And we stay another night. And for the main part of the night, nothing happens. About 1 in the morning. We're outside getting drunk and telling ghost stories. And someone is finishing some too spooky story. I don't remember what about. But the smell comes back. And it's so fucking strong that one of the girls literally starts vomiting. I stand up and you can actually feel how clammy the air is. And I say that we should go inside. This isn't right. We should have just fucking left. We all go back inside, and we're standing around, and my cousin just keeps going on about how it's the goat man, and my cousin Rooster tries to shut him the fuck up. All the while, I'm just feeling that something is wrong, and I can't figure out what the fuck it is. We end up sitting there for a while, and the smell is just as strong, and we're terrified, and all huddled in this camper, and we, we end up cooking brats for everyone because nobody wants to go outside. It's one of those packs with four brats in a, in a pack that we... We had a couple, a total of three packs. I grill them up on the stove and give everyone a hot dog. I get mine. And after a while, one of my cousins gets up and goes over to the pot to get another one. He starts grumbling about how the fuck do I get two and everybody else gets one. And I look at him like he's fucking stupid. I tell him that everyone got one because there's twelve brats. If you wanted more, you should open up a new pack and cook some more. It had been out with Rooster and Tan just starts screaming, Oh Jesus, oh Lord, get out! She screams and shivers, and when it dawns on the cousin standing up, what the fuck is wrong? Me and him both glance around the room, and I, I feel my heart fucking sink. I run the fuck out of the cabin, the girl runs out with us, the, the trailer door is banging against the side of the trailer as everyone books out of the cabin. One of my cousin's friends asks us, what the fuck is wrong? And I start counting us. There's only 11 now. I shit you not, my cousin verified. There had been 12 people in the cabin, but being that everyone didn't really know each other well, nobody had really noticed 
the whole fucking time, but there was an extra person. And then I realized earlier that I had kind of noticed something was off. You know, how when you're just dicking around having a good time, you don't sweat the small stuff. You don't always keep track of certain stuff. But I'm dead sure that someone else had been in that trailer with us. And that they had been there for at least a fucking day, eating with us. And what makes it worse, I could, I could figure out which one. Because I don't think anyone ever actually interacted with the other person. Goatman. The girl kept praying to Jesus, and we're all sitting outside, and eventually we get big ass sticks and go back into the cabin, and there's nobody there. We count again, and there's 11 people. We go back to the trailer and lock the door. We explain what the fuck happened. And the girl says that she realized too, and that's when. He was about to say something. The person sitting next to her had grabbed her leg hard, leaned over toward her, and said something that she couldn't understand. So we all pretty much scared as fuck, and we huddled together, and then... I, I fall asleep. And when I wake up, the sun is just coming up, and half the people are asleep, and then half are packing our shit up. We all want to walk back home, but like four people want to stay until the sun is all the way up. And some people think that we're just fucking around and still want to stay at the trailers. I just... I just want to get the fuck out of the woods. The girl's name was Kira. The one that the goat man had touched. Anyway, I asked her if she really thinks it was something bad. And she says that she just wants to go home. She doesn't want to be out in the woods alone for another night. So, we decide to split up, and the four that want to go can go. And that I have to stay because I have the keys to the cabin, and it's my uncle's, and I have to lock up. I'm super pissed at this point because I feel like people aren't taking the shit seriously, and I definitely don't want to be out here in the woods for another night. So I spend the rest of the day trying to convince the rest of the people, now four girls, four guys, to get the fuck out of Dodge. And Tanner leaves with them to go get a rifle and says that he's going to be back. So there are seven of us left. This is about 4 p.m. At around 5, he hasn't made it back yet, and we're extremely fucking antsy, and the only reason I stopped begging them to go was because he went to get a gun. It's about 5.30 or so when the cousin that did stay says that the girl Kira is outside. We all look outside, and sure enough, she's standing by the fire pit with her back to the cabin. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, she was so fucking scared, why the fuck did she come back? And I get this antsy feeling in my gut. Keep in mind, the whole time, the copper smell has been gone, but now I realize I can smell just a twinge of it. I say this to the rest of them and everybody. These are the people that wanted to stay in the fucking woods after we had the goddamn goat man in our midst are laughing at me and asking me did I set this up to scare them. And I'm looking at them like I am not fucking bullshitting you at all right now. I ask them why the fuck would I play like that. So one of the girls goes outside to get Kara. She gets halfway to her and stops cold. Kira starts heaving. I don't know how the fuck to describe it. Sort of like, sort of like, um, if somebody was with their back turned and was laughing without actually making any sound. It was this fact that I, that made me realize it was not a fucking sound in the whole woods. It was dead silent. This was like later in September, so it was still fairly hot at the time, but it was super chilly some days too, and you could usually hear big ass geese honking or some kind of birds or squirrels chittering. So I step out of the door and tell her to come back, come back in the fucking trailer right damn now. She backs up to the trailer, and we lock the fucking door. We, we pull down all the shades except for one and put a guy there in a chair to watch her. And she stands there for another 20 minutes or so. The guy turns to say that she's still there. And there's this huge fucking bang on the door. We all jump the fuck up and scramble around the living room of the trailer. The bamming is so fucking loud. 
He looks around the room and then gets super pale. He pulls me to the side and whispers in my ear, You know, there's only seven of us in here, right? And I get this feeling where my stomach drops to your nuts. It, 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 had, it had been back inside the trailer when we were sorting out who was going where. And then when we all went outside to talk earlier in the day, it just, it just slipped right back in there. We looked out the window and there was nobody out there. So we recount everybody and basically I go over and ask everyone how many people were here earlier and they all say eight. Well, how many are here now? And they all count and then realize there's only seven people in the cabin. So Tan had brought back a couple of boxes of ammo as well. And he told us that his dad, that there had been some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think his dad would have believed him if he said that it was the goat man. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours, and that in the morning, we could all go back to his place and his cousin will drive us home. Now, I'm really fucking terrified. But I at least feel better because we can all be American and shoot the fuck out of whatever it is that comes back. But then my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks that I'm trying to be funny and prank them and that she's getting really scared and that I'm not funny and he keeps telling her that I'm not the kind of guy and she says, well, how do we know that the girl wasn't just Tanner in a wig? Or if it's really the goat man, how do we know that this is the real Tanner and that the goat man didn't just kill Tanner in the woods and take his gun? So, we fucking get into a huge argument about this where me and Tan are just like, we could seriously be in danger because at this very... Because at the very least, someone has to be sneaking themselves into our fucking trailer without us knowing and mingling with us. And at worst, it's something bad in the forest fucking with us. One of the girls is crying and saying that she wants to go right now. And we're all trying to tell her it's no fucking go because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. And at this point, the sun is starting to go down and it's getting a little cloudy out. We eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station out there with, with anything decent, so we turn it off. At around the time that Tan's cousin shows up, he was like, uh, 19, I think. Well, at this point, the sun is just barely over the horizon, and he used one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks up to the trailer, and we whisper to Tan, asking if he's sure that's his cousin. He says yes. The guy looks behind him, and all around the camp, and then walks in. He kind of glances at us, and looks a little confused. He asks where your other little buddy is at. I figured that she would meet up at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? And he also asks whether we had been cooking blood in the cabin because it smelled like bloody and hot pans all the way up the trail and we were all just like fucking nope. But we all ask him what the fuck he's talking about with the girl he saw and he had come down the same trail that Tan had been using. That he had come up on one of your guys' buddies standing in the middle of the trail looking at him slack-jawed. And he had asked her a bunch of questions but all she did was just look at him and then she smiled at him and he said that he kept walking but... She couldn't seem to keep up with him. He kept lagging a little bit behind. He said that he asked her if she was hurt or something, and did she need any help. But she she continued to stare, and eventually he had been walking and turned around, abandoned the trail, but when he turned around and went back to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He had assumed that she had taken some shortcut through the woods to our trailers. I tell him the whole story of what's been going on. I have expect him to say that we're full of shit, but he just listened and then sat down on the couches in the living room. Tanner's cousin gets back to the Tanner's cousin gets back to the girl. He says when she had kept trying to lag behind him, it, it kind of weirded him the fuck out, so he tried to keep her in front of him. No matter how slow he walked, she was always lagging a little bit behind and that she smiled this nasty smile and it got stronger as he got to the camp. He said, he said, eventually, it got really strong. She had said something really low that he didn't catch and he had turned and she had been right the fuck up on him and he stepped back from her. It was at this point that he asked her if she was okay and, and if she wanted him to carry her back the rest of the way and she just kept staring. 
He said that he reached out for her as in to grab her on the shoulder, but he must have misjudged the distance because she was off to the side of where he had put his hand, like she had moved while he was looking dead at her. So at this point, we know this shit's real unless Tan is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants. So, they load up the rifles, we eat some more, and we just kind of sit around until about 11. And to this fucking day, every time I think about this, I, I really pray to God that it's just some huge prank that my cousins played on me and just never revealed. So I would just shit for the rest of my life. Yet, at around 11, the stink of copper turns into an actual nasty gross blood smell, like cooking blood and singed hair. Tan and his cousin Reese get the fuck up instantly and grab the rifles. There was like a, a half knocking, half clawing at the door, and I shit you not, there's this voice, and it sounds like when you see those, those YouTube cats and dogs whose owner teaches them how to talk, and it, it says in this halting weird tone voice, let me the fuck in. Stop fucking playing. It made a fucking chill creep up against my body. One of the girls just starts crying and calling on Jesus. And it was so fucking obviously not a person talking. It didn't have the right cadence. And that's some shit that I never realized until that moment. But all people have a certain cadence when they talk. No matter what language. All people have a certain kind of, kind of rhythm to talking. This shit didn't have any kind of cadence and rhythm. YouTube, those, YouTube those cats... That's what the fuck it sounded like, outside the door. So, now I'm in full-on terror mode, and we keep yelling outside, Who is it? Stop fucking around, man! And it just keeps saying, In. Or, Let me the fuck in, for almost 15 minutes. Sorry for being on a tangent, but... If you can't imagine how this shit sounded, then you can't imagine how, f how fucked up the whole situation was. So then, the smell goes away after a while. And for the next hour or so, you can hear someone basically creeping around the woods and shit. And every couple of minutes, it goes back to the door and says something. And finally, when the smell fades away, it's around 2 in the morning. He says, man, fuck this, and open the door. And walks outside with his rifle. He fires a shot into the air. And says something to the effect of, in the name of Jesus Christ, go away. And... He fires two more times, and then from the woods, right up against the river across from where the river is, it sounds like something is slowly gibbering and hooting. Then it starts screaming, and it sounds almost like a woman and a cat in a bag screaming together, like, I seriously have never heard any shit like that, and you can, and you can hear the brush over that way start to shake. Reese fires over into it, and the tree line, and starts backing into the house, and we lock the door, and we can all hear the shit keening and screaming, and Reese says something that had come out of the bushes, super low to the ground, crawling towards the cabin, and he had shot at it. And pretty much, that's how the rest of the night went. It literally was screaming constantly for the next two hours. We could hear the shit moving around into the tree line, but it never came back to the cabin until everyone had finally fallen asleep. Tan had been sitting at the chair watching the door with his rifle, and nobody, nobody else heard or saw it. And he told me two days later after the whole thing was over, he said that he had been nodding off after the screaming and noises had finally stopped, and he had been almost asleep when he saw someone come out of the bathroom and then lay down on the floor and go to sleep. And he just assumed it was one of us and he had nodded off. And he said he kind of realized something was wrong and while pretending to be asleep he counted us. There were nine people in the cabin. He basically didn't want to try to shoot at the fucking thing in the cabin and have it kill us. 
or have Reese wake up and start shooting and then we kill ourselves. So he just stayed awake all night pretending not to be asleep. He said sometimes it would stand up and kind of do this weird jittery thing or heave like it was laughing. But then it would lay back down. Now the story kind of closes pretty weak, right? Because from my perspective, nothing happened. We woke up and I noticed that Tan was a little jittery and that he was avoiding looking at us. We ate some breakfast, packed up, and started walking to his house. And he stayed last in the cabin and said that he'd lock up and bring me my uncle's keys to just start walking and he'd catch up, which I, I didn't really want to fucking do. We got a little up the path, and then he came running up, and basically, we just jogged back to his house, and his cousin took us home. There was a... There was a window in the bathroom. Tan had gone back to lock up and look in there, and he said there was a window. That we were too stupid to lock that, and that there was no screen on it, and the window was fucking up when he went in there. I'm guessing that he had been doing that all along, waiting for us to fall asleep and, or slip up and then getting in among us. It walked with us all the goddamn way back to his house. And then he, he said it, it lagged to the back of the group and then, then it looked him dead in the eyes. And it walked into the woods.